What is up guys? Welcome back to Mad DIY. It's your boy Dave. Today we're going to be configuring some things for the RetroPie, some controllers. I showed you a video before on how we configured Buffalo Classic USB gaming pad. Today we're going to be configuring the NES 30 Pro game controller. 8 bit -o. That's pretty cool. That's a cool game pad. Check it out. So it charges up through the little mini USB there. It's nice. It's very solid, especially compared to the uh, Buffalo Classic USB gamepad. And it's wireless. So it has your analog sticks there as well. So let's go ahead and get this guy configured. So let's take it on over. Which pie? Which pie? We'll, we'll take this one. We should do it on the big screen, but we'll do it here. So I'm going to put it next to my Hayaboot NES game style pad there. And we're going to go ahead now and get this guy configured. So let's get started. Oh, just in case you were curious, I wanted to show you what else would be in the box. I mean, I have so many USB cords around the house. I'm just going to use the one I already have over there. Underneath there, there's another little package there. Don't forget about that guy. You open it up. You got your manual. And then you have... Everything old is new again. Pretty cool. Open this guy up and they give you a cool little keychain there. It's FC30. Everything old is new again keychain. 30th anniversary. It's got the little game pad on the back there. I like that. And also you have your gray USB cable. That's what's going to be in the uh, glass box there. Leave it in there. I'm just going to use one of the mini ones I have over the house there. So let's get started. First thing we want to do over here is plug our controller in. I plugged it in directly with the USB. It says uh, software not successfully installed. Yeah, that's fine. You want to go ahead and go to the 8bitdo.com website. Here, we're going to update the firmware on the controller. Now, if you already have your firmware updated, you can just go ahead and skip ahead to the part where we're going to add it to the RetroPie. So, 8bitdo website, we're just simply going to click support. Okay, under support, you're going to go ahead and here's your controller. These are actually really cool as well. But we're going to go ahead and click firmware. And under firmware, we want to go ahead and select version 4.01. This is what we want to go ahead and download. So we're going to click download to get the latest firmware and save. In the beginning, I said plug your controller in. Of course, I, I, I'm sorry. Let me backtrack really quick. You want to plug that in so you can get a little bit of charge on there so we can do this next step. So we're going to go ahead and unplug the controller. And from here, we need to put the controller into firmware mode. What we need to do is press the two buttons at the bottom right there. We're going to hold those down for about 10 seconds until the controller starts flashing yellow. There we go. It was actually more like two seconds. So now that it's flashing, it's in firmware mode to accept the firmware update. So now we're going to go ahead and plug this guy into the computer now again. Got to get that firmware it's still flashing yellow. So let's set it down there. Now we're going to go to the application. It's right there. I know it's probably not coming in clear on the computer there. We're going to select after you extract the zip file. We're going to go ahead and select the 8-bit Doe update windows that's what I'm using. Select the Mac if you're using Mac, of course. Gonna select yes, and we're going to get this hold power and plus pairing for three seconds. Yellow LED will blink. Connect to PC via USB cable. Click USB update button and select firmware. So we're already blinking, we're already connected, so we're gonna select USB update. Now let's get that update. So now we gotta go to the folder where we extract it. By default, it should open to it. It's the N30 Pro, F30 Pro firmware version 4.01.dat file. It is a dat file. We wanna go ahead and select that and hit open. New firmware 4.0 and the current is 1.68 load version 4.01 and click okay. And now we wait for it to load. After the update is complete, you're gonna get firmware upgraded. Just go ahead and click okay. And we can exit out all this good stuff. So now you can disconnect the controller and let's head over to the RetroPie. All the way over to the RetroPie. Tony, is it okay if I hook up the pie? Could I hook up the controller? You look pretty upset there. You want some bones? Of course, you're gonna need your other controller that you have plugged in, or you may have to configure a USB controller first in order to use that device. So what we're gonna do, let me back out of here. I was gonna replace some Mario Brothers. We're gonna scroll over to the RetroPie menu. Uh, so many games, so many games. Oh, there we go. RetroPie, and then we're gonna scroll down to Bluetooth. First thing we wanna do is, and see right now, 8-bit dough mapping hack is on for firmware. We wanna go ahead and turn that guy off. So I'm gonna select it, and now it's off. So here's my controller, register and connect to a Bluetooth device. Okay, if it doesn't register the first time, see, you're, you'll see several different MAC addresses if you're like me and you have several different Bluetooths plugged in throughout the house. Mine didn't pop up. I know what C8 is and BC and 5.2. E4 is going to be my 8-bit Doe controller. What I did is I just simply held the two buttons at the bottom end for about 10 seconds until it started flashing blue like this. 
for it to sync. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit OK to sync it up. Successfully registered and connected. We're going to go ahead and click OK again and hit off to the next. Oh, one other thing. A lot of folks had issues who did set this up because every time they would set it up after they restart or shut the system down, start playing again, it wouldn't remember the settings. This is very important. You want to go ahead and scroll down to right there. Set up UDEF rule for joy Joypad and requires Joypads from 8BitDo, etc. So go ahead and click OK on there. And from here, select the controller, which is the 8BitDo NES30. Now it's added. We're going to have to reboot for the configuration to take effect and we're going to hit OK and now we can back out of this guys and we're just going to go ahead and restart like the system requested so it can go ahead and write that script to the RetroPie and this in return is now going to remember that controller every time you shut down or when you have to restart. Okay we've now restarted the system I'm still well I'm solid blue now so that's a good sign it's more like a pulse that it's breathing, the controller's slowly breathing, guys. So that's a good sign, it's not flashing blue. That means it's synced up. So what we need to do now is go ahead and hit start on your controller, go down to configure input, and we wanna click yes for configure input, and we wanna hold down the A button on the 8-bit DO controller. So let's go ahead and do that, hold down the A button, voila, there we go. So we're just gonna follow the simple menu there. But I wanna point something out, just in case, just in case, guys, you get to that option where it'll say two controllers detected, and you're holding the A button down on your 8-bit though and nothing happens, just plug in a USB cable to your RetroPie and then hold the A button. And now the only difference is it's going to flash green, letting you know, hey, you're connected by USB. And I just skipped the menu option, but I'll come back to that. So that's just another option. Do it with the USB cable in just so we can get the buttons configured and then we'll unplug it, restart, and we should be back in business. So let's go ahead and we'll go through the menu option. We're going to go ahead and press up, down, left, right. We're going to hit start, select, A. A, B, X, Y, left shoulder, right shoulder. There is no left trigger or right trigger, so we're gonna just hold down a button to skip, skip. Now we're gonna push the left analog thumb in, right in. So once you get to the end, you can always you always have the option to go back up. Okay, and the last option for the hotkey enabled, I'm gonna go ahead and press select. Button 10, go down and hit okay. If you look at the controller, it is now a slow, very slow breathe. So let's go ahead and back out of here and voila, that's how it's done guys. Let's see what happens when you restart. So let's go start, quit, restart, emulation station. So let's let it restart. As you see, the controller still has the slow blue breathe there and voila. So with this version of firmware, unlike the other, you don't have to hit any special commands and hold A down or anything like that. You're good to go. Load this version of firmware, you're good to go. If for some reason you mess up and the controller's not detected, start it all over again. Go back to the RetroPie menu option, select Bluetooth, and underneath there is gonna be an option that says remove, and you're gonna remove the 8-bit dough, and then you're gonna just simply start the process over again. Do it exactly as I explained from start to finish, and you'll be good to go with the settings there. If for some reason, after a power down, it still won't connect. You know, you just turn both devices on. You got your throbbing blue lights there. Simply hold an appearing button right there until you get the uh, flashing blue lights. Take your other controller and scroll over to RetroPie. Now, I know this part sucks that you would have to do this every time, but at least it'll get you up and operational and you don't have to troubleshoot this thing for an hour and you can just do this quick fix. So you're gonna go to RetroPie. You're gonna go back down to Bluetooth. I'm gonna simply connect now to all registered devices. Cancel. And voila. So that's your quick fix, folks. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't wanna do too much of a technical breakdown. I know a lot of these videos show you how to connect. The problem is, is you can connect to the controller, but once you turn your device off or after you do a restart, it's gone again. So I'm giving you a quick fix on how to reconnect it. You don't have to pull your hair out for the next three hours trying to figure out how to get the thing to reconnect. So as you see, it is now reconnected. So now guys, you got your controller configured. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's your boy Dave signing out, Mad DIY. Till next time, peace.